Get your glasses up. Get your glasses up. A toast to the men. Welcome to A Toast to the Men with your guy, S.D. Booker. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for the support. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Let's go. The Derek Chauvin verdict is in. As you guys uh, may know, uh, you have to be under a rock or sleep for quite a while not to know this. But he was uh, convicted on all counts. Uh, that was a mix of manslaughter and murder. Uh, variations between uh, first degree and second degree. Uh, so that's a, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, I made a video around this case or around this act of violence and addressed Chavine and George Floyd in the same video. And I was pretty balanced about it. Um, I did state that I felt that uh, Derek Chavine uh, is guilty, that uh, he should be convicted and found guilty. Um, but as I do, I was uh, objective on my stance. And so I brought out some objectivity about George Floyd and some objectivity about Derek Chauvin. And uh, you, can, you can look up that video. Now, as far as today, uh, being convicted on all counts, uh, I think, I think uh, so far justice was served. Now, we still gotta go through the appeals process and we don't know how that's gonna turn out. I think for the most part, these convictions are going to uh, hold up, you know, uh, for several reasons. Um, I think they should hold up, but uh, aside from that, I think they have to hold up or uh, it's gonna be a lot of riots and turmoil just a lot of madness. So I think they have to hold up. By the way, I'm in uh I'm in our office slash oh man, uh store stuff away room. So yeah, uh making this video pretty late, decided to come in here. So you've probably never seen this background or these surroundings. But yeah, we're in the office. This is where my wife works a lot. <clears throat> so yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's so many angles and so many variables and layers to this whole story, this whole narrative. So he was convicted. Now what? Uh, now what, black people? Now what do we do? Where, where do we go from here? I think we got bigger problems. I know we got bigger problems than police brutality, uh, police assaults, people dying at the hands of the police. We got bigger issues than that in the black community. I just heard or read a day ago that a seven year old in Chicago was gunned down in a drive by shooting. Uh, Allegedly, the assailants were going after her dad and uh, she was in the car in the McDonald's drive through with him. And uh, he was injured and but survived so far and she was killed. Uh, a girl, young girl in Fort Worth was accidentally shot. Um, I mean, this stuff happens all the time the black on black crime. That's our biggest issue. I'm telling you, man, this uh, police brutality thing or people dying at the hands of police, it's a smoke screen. It's a smoke screen because we don't wanna deal with the real issues in our community. We are our worst enemy. We do more harm to ourselves than anyone. Uh, that's just what it is, man. 
And you can say, well, you, of course you're going to have a high percentage of black on black crime, just like you would have a higher percentage of white on white crime. Because for the most part, we die where we spend most of our time, where we live. So when crimes happen, it's probably going to be at the hands of someone that looks like us. Which is a valid point, but I'm talking about the types of crimes, the types of violent crimes, the 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 uh, multiple murders, the drive-by shootings, the parties where four or five, six people are killed or injured, uh, the gang violence. That's what I'm talking about. Um, and maybe I don't hear these types of stories about other races because I'm not in their community. And maybe the media is just pushing um, the violence that happens with black people because uh, they want to send a certain message and set a certain tone that could be possible but my number one concern my number one uh, priority is my own community right that's where it should be so we got to deal with our stuff uh, for the most part, <clears throat> there's tension between the black woman and the black man. Family court is packed with us. I know that for a fact. We we make up the majority, man, when it comes to family court in the DFW area. Uh, can't get along. With a non-custodial parent, can't get along. The custodial parent, the kids suffer. We're just all messed up. Um, this stuff is happening. The violence is happening because there's a disconnect between the man and the woman, between the parents. And this system, this court system, this judicial system encourages dissent and bitterness and strife between the black man and the black woman. So the kids suffer. These kids, these children grow up into uh, teenagers, young adults, and they're misguided. They're angry, they're misguided, they're lost. Let me tell you where you get your guidance from. We pick up some things from my mom <clears throat> of course, that's why we have two parents, male and female, and they both play an integral, an important part in our lives, in our development. But you get your sense of self, your self-awareness, your self-esteem, your high self-esteem, your high self-awareness from your father. And when there's no father around or no male figure around, to instill that in you, you're all out of whack, the boys and the girls. And so we got to get that right first. We got to clean up our own house first, sweep our own porch before we start looking over to our neighbor's porch. We got to take care of home first. So, you know, they can keep pushing this police brutality thing. But if you be honest with yourselves, that's the least of our problems. And the, the thing is, we're for sale. You know, uh, they know we're for sale. They know we'll take the money over, over anything. So this is why uh, these families like George Floyd, Floyd family and uh, a few other families of uh, men who have died uh, in the custody of police. Their families take these settlements and that's why you don't hear them speaking out because that's part of the settlement. You take the money, you stop speaking. So they know our voice is for sale. 
our scruples are questionable. Our principles, if we have any principles, are question, question, questionable and can be sold for the right price. They know this. It's proven. We see it. We see it constantly. So, uh, yeah, man, we got to decide what's, what's most important, man. What's our culture? What are our principles? What do we stand on? What is, what is our foundation as a culture, as a people? What do we really stand on? Um, we got to get our own stuff right, man. We got to be disciplined. We got to be focused. And that's going to call for the family unit to come together, the community to come together. That's going to be difficult when you got feminists, uh, that uh, constantly fight men, you know, contest men or alpha men. Uh, you got other men, you got men that pander to women and don't hold women accountable. So it's a it's an uphill battle. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's an uphill battle. And so, you know, it makes me lean towards not even being so concerned sometimes of my race, but just my tribe. And what I mean by that is your tribe is not necessarily your race. Now, it's great. If uh, your tribe happens, happens to be your race, but I don't believe your tribe has to be your race. And um, it could be a mixture of races, a mixture of cultures. And uh, I think your tribe is a group of people who are going the same direction you're going and have the same focus, the same determination and um, rooted in the same principles as you are. I believe that's your tribe and that's not necessarily your race. So, you know, that I go back and forth with that. I want black folks to win, but it's like, man, is that is that how it's meant to be though? Like, is it supposed to be regrouped with our race? Or we group with what we group with our tribe, meaning people who are going where we're going, and it reminds me of the passage in the Bible where Jesus is off teaching, preaching, and uh, someone comes up to him and don't quote me verbatim on this, but someone comes to him and says, uh, "Your father, your mother." And brother looking for you. And he's like, I have no mother and brother. My, uh, as I said, don't quote me on this, but my, my mother and brother is anyone who's doing the will of God or the will of my father. So that means he don't care. He doesn't care for your blood or if you have the same race. If you're not going in his direction, Man, we, we ain't family. His tribe is his family. And so, uh, we want to talk that way. Even though we grew up on the Bible, right? But people really don't want to deal with that, that hard, cold reality that you may have to break away from people that share your skin complexion or share your race or share your DNA. And you might have to just group with people who are going in the same direction you're going in. People don't want to deal with that because we have emotional ties. So, people, where do we go from here? We got a guilty verdict. We don't know if it's going to hold up after the appeals, but I think it will. 
I think it was the right verdict. Uh, but like I stated in the video I made a week or two ago that uh, on a low level, Chavina is guilty. But on a high level, I think it was poetic justice for both of these guys because neither one of these guys were living uh, within their purpose, pursuing their purpose. Um, you know, you got George Floyd <clears throat> with the drugs and the crime. You got Chavine with the ego. He's been reprimanded a few times, reported a few times, been over aggressive violations. So his ego, you can see when he had his knee on George Floyd's neck, his ego was out of the roof. George Floyd with the drugs couldn't simply get into the car, into the vehicle, into the, the, the police car. Uh, just out of control, man, both of them. Right before that incident, there's a video of George Floyd tweaking inside a store. It looks like he made a drug transaction with a gentleman. And uh, I'm going to tell you what's crazy, man. My wife and I were looking at the video. She had just walked in the room. It's about a week ago. She had just walked in the room while the video was playing on the television. And uh, when you look at the video, <laughs> if you just look at George Floyd in the video, he's moving hella fast, right? Now, everything else around him is moving at normal speed, but he's moving very fast. But that's who catches your attention because he's moving so fast. And she was like, man, what is going on? I was like, man, that's George Floyd. He's tweaking. He's like, what's wrong with the, t the TV? Man, she thought the TV was in fast forward mode. I said, no, no, he, he's just tweaking. He's moving that fast at real speed. It's not, it's not a fast forward mode. He's moving that fast at, at real speed. And uh, yeah, man, he's out of control. Chavin's out of control. So yeah, on a higher level, I think it was poetic justice. Both of these guys hit a wall and needed to be plucked, exposed. Um, you know, I see a lot of craziness being said. Pelosi said, thank you, George Floyd, for sacrificing your life. Man, that's, that's just over the top. He did not sacrifice his life. George Floyd, at the moment, on those drugs, being a drug addict, didn't care about anything but himself. That's what drug addicts do. <clears throat> that's how they are. That's how they think. He didn't care about anything, about anyone but himself. And he only cared about getting to the drugs, about getting high. That's it. He did not sacrifice his life. We're not going to make him martyr, uh, a hero. Cause that's a lie and we need to start telling the truth about our people living our truth that's a lie and um did he deserve to die i can't say if he deserved to die or not like i said maybe it was quite justice george floyd did a lot of danger did a lot of harm to people and uh, hurt a lot of people uh you know so we need to stop it man with the with the lies and covering up our mess as a community, and we need to stop it. Just tell the truth, and we can we can get past. We can grow, heal, learn. We can learn from this if we tell the truth. But uh, making him a hero, a martyr, come on, it's BS. It's BS. I guarantee you, if I polled a hundred women. I'm going to say 100 black women. If I polled 100 black women and I said, would you, would you have been willing to marry George Floyd? I guarantee you, man, at least 98% are going to say no. And you don't have that 2%, that flakiness. They just want to be different, man. But I guarantee at least 98% are going to say no. If I was to poll 100 black women and ask them, would you have been willing to have a child by George Floyd? I guarantee at least 98% would say no. 
And like I said, you're going to have that flaky 2%. So stop it. Stop acting like this guy was a hero. He wasn't. Um, I don't take joy in his death. But I'm not sad either. You know, death is, is natural. Now, we would like to die a certain way with honor, with dignity. Uh, but uh, he died hot. He died tweaking. And was Shaveen wrong? Yes. But the fact of the matter is, George Floyd was wrong. George Floyd would be alive if George Floyd wasn't high. That's, that's the bottom line, man. All he had to do was get inside the police vehicle <clears throat> and go to jail. You know, go to jail. You got, uh, I see a lot of fakeness. You know, you got a lot of people saying they loved him. And uh, Steven Jackson, uh, they loved him so much, man. And Steven Jackson calls him his brother, his twin, right? His play brother, so to speak. Why was this man trying to pass a fake $20 bill? Why? And his so-called twin, his, his so-called brother, is a multimillionaire. You know, it's just amazing. This man had to, tried to pass off a $20 bill, and now his, uh, his family, his kids, or his kid's mom, uh, it's worth millions, millions over millions. And this brother didn't add anything positive uh, to society. That's a fact. That's a fact. He took, he took away more than he gave. Now, like I said, his death was poetic justice to expose uh, Chavin and uh, maybe a corrupt system. But it was also uh, to pluck George Floyd out of here, too. And I'm, like I said in the previous video, you know, uh, maybe he, he comes back in a different life and a uh, different body and gets an opportunity to try it again, uh, to right some wrongs. Like I say, I know I got to come back to right some wrongs, uh, but <clears throat> I've given, I've given back to the universe more than I took as a young man. Yeah, I've given way more back to the universe than I took. Yeah. So, uh, what do we do now? Where, where do we go now? Got the verdict. What now? What are we going to do in our own community? So, uh, let's not be distracted. Let's take care of home. And let's face some hard truths. And uh, take care of our business. We got to stick together, brothers. Uh, man up. And uh, do what we're created to do. And let's lead. Let's lead like men. Let's be men. All right? Peace.